Well, good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome everybody to our Palm Sunday service. A week away from Easter, an incredible time in our faith, in the world's history, an amazing time to be together. When we do gather, it's a great time to celebrate. Celebrate fun things, things that are happening, joys and concerns. Does anybody have anything they would like to lift up this morning? <coughs> Jamie. We are grandparents for a second time. Jackson Spencer arrived Thursday at 4.03 p.m. Woohoo! Congratulations. David. Two things. Um, first, please remember uh, we are still collecting the cans or goods, whatever, through Monday, Thursday. If you bring those on Monday, Thursday, then sometime in the next few days after that, I'll get those taken over to Joseph. Out. And also on behalf of Minister Alliance, we want to lift up next door uh, on Good Friday at noon. We have our Good Friday uh, community service. So we hope to see lots of people there. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for helping out with getting everything in Joseph's Code. I know you enjoyed it. We'll have to go the year and it'll be a fun time again. We're very thankful. Yes. Thank you. Do we have anything else this morning? Yes. Let's see, trustees and council meet Wednesday evening at 7. Um, the flowers kind of toward the front of the altar are in honor of our uh, granddaughter and husband's first anniversary, which is actually on Easter, but I thought there might be a Easter lily, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also I heard from Pam Lehman. Um, they have... Uh, She's bought another house to move, so I'll put the address in the newsletter. Um, and if you want it before then, you can either get me after church or call me the whisper. And uh, they're doing, they're all doing very well. Great, thank you. Appreciate that. We have any others this morning? Yes. The uh, hydrangea flowers is for my birthday, which was this past week from my own son. Um, also, I ask for prayers um, Wayne's, for Wayne's sister and brother-in-law that live over by Iowa. Um, he passed out Friday morning after shortly getting up in bed, and she had this reply taking from the farm to Missouri Valley Hospital. He is home now, but then do some testing to try to figure out what had happened. And then on top of that, the day before, he had sprained his wrist, so she was really having to care for him, but he's a determined 82-year-old farmer that he's not ready to quit. <laughs> Very, that's it. Those folks never do ever quit, so they will go all the way out, that's for sure. So that's Delbert Maverick. Delbert? Delbert Maverick. Maverick. He's a brother to Harry. Thank you. We're trying to keep him in the prayers, too. That, okay. remind, that reminds me. Please keep Jack Mount in your prayers. Um, he's going to get his heart procedure on Friday, Good Friday, and then he'll have two heart surgeries in June, so we need to keep him in our prayers, please. Absolutely. Thank you for keeping us. Please keep us up to speed on the good news that we're going to hear from all these things, so I appreciate that. Any others? Kate? Uh, I got a call from Shirley Emmerich yesterday, and she was in tears. She said it's like a bad dream. Her son, Tim, wife died in her sleep. Oh. I think she was, she thinks she was 58. And she had health problems and it was terrible because Tim was a national business and he was calling her and she had her, so we had Jane go and knock on the door and it was terrible. So the so first day of the back and the first call and then Jane was going to have both of her, her daughter-in-law and son-in-law both had She didn't want to be putting up for her Jane, but she had no announcement. Well, our prayer chain covers all that, so she's she's not wanting that one on there, so we cover. Well, I mean, she just didn't want it out on the text. I yes, don't know why, but the, that's fine, but we cover yeah. all on there, so thank you so much for letting us know. We appreciate that. Cheryl. I wasn't kind of in shock after that. <clears throat> Only thing I can think of is that we have choir practice immediately after church. <coughs> Oh, welcome and thank you for joining us. That is a wonderful. 
wonderful thing to have you here with us today on Palm Sunday also, a great celebration day. Do you have any other announcements, joys, concerns, things? Now let's continue our service this morning with our call to worship. Come from the city streets. Join the happy throng that gathers to honor Jesus. Come from your busy homes and places of business. Put down your work in joyful celebration. Come, lay down your sorrows and worries. Turn your eyes toward the Savior, whom God has sent. Let us all join in joyful singing. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is Jesus Christ, who comes in God's name. Amen. Now I invite all who are able to please stand for this morning's opening hymn. It's going to be hymn number 173, Our Glory, Law, and Honor. Purify and accept our 
And at this time, I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward for our first offering, which is for the missions of this church right here. <laughs> Being Palm Sunday this morning, we're going to have the blessing of our palms, and then our youth from our Sunday school will pass out palms to everybody here. So please join me in the blessing of the palms. We have it printed in your bulletins. God be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Most High. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. O oh God, God, who in Jesus Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem, Herald in the week of pain and sorrow, be with us now as we follow the way of the cross. In these events of defeat and victory, you have sealed the closeness of death and resurrection, of humiliation and exaltation. We thank you for these branches that promise to become for us the symbols of martyrdom and majesty. Bless them. That their use this day may announce in our time that Christ has come and that Christ will come again. Amen. Come, come Christ Jesus. Now I invite our church youth to come forward, distribute the palms. <laughs> Now please join together in our service hymn. It's going to be hymn number 174, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
Now let's invite our young and our young at heart to come forward for our young disciples' message. celebrate today too by giving out palm branches to everybody and we use these and we think about Jesus when he rode in on his donkey anybody ever hear of Jesus ever meeting a donkey before never heard of that before so something very special is happening on this day way back do you like a parade you like a parade how about our, our yes, oh, yes like a parade, okay. Parades are a lot of fun times. Can you imagine when Jesus was riding in, it was all about one person. It's about him. And he was in this parade of himself, and people were throwing their cloaks on the ground and singing Hosanna as he came in. What a great day, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. It was a parade. It was fun. People were everywhere. It was on Passover, so everybody was there with their family, friends, their pets, the little lamb, all sorts of things. So on Palm Sunday, we celebrate that entry when Jesus came in as king. They knew it finally. They got it. All those three years he'd been out, some people got it, some didn't. But that day, everybody got it. They had fun. Just like when you see a parade here in town, and you see the big tall guy come through or the float come by, you know what that's about. Today, people knew what Jesus was doing. And you know, it's a good time when you think about holding those palm branches. I see everybody left there in the seat except me. Got mine. Is we can show evangelism. We can show that we believe when we have our palm with us. Because what's another good time to show that you believe? What's another good way? All the time. You can do it all the time. You can do it in skit. Mm -hmm. You can do it out in the sports field. You can do it lighting candles. You can do it bringing the offering up to the front later. You can do it by being here and making something nice for people to eat and enjoy. You can do it in so many different ways. You can do it by talking up in front, by taking part and handing out palms. So you get to show your Christians in so many different ways. And that's kind of easy, isn't it? Just handing out some palms, just bringing in a little bit of treats playing on a football field or soccer field or basketball court, having fun. Music conservatory work, great things. Wonderful things you can do that show your love. You care for somebody else. And that's what Jesus did all throughout his time. He showed that he cared. How did he show how he, he cared for people? He died for us. That's the main thing right there. But he also, what's something else he did that showed people he loved them? He healed people. He healed people. He was teaching also. You guys all have teachers, don't you? Well, most of you. I'm learning every day. There you go. We have teachers all throughout our lives. And the teachers love to tell you things, impart knowledge. Jesus did the same thing. And you can do the same things like that also. By being nice. By showing. You love people by smiling. Handing out palms. Doing nice things. So you can always remember all the things Jesus did for us. You can share those too. You have the power. You have the power. You have the power. You, 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 all them. Everybody here has got the power. The same power that Jesus had to go out and do nice things. So always remember, nice things we can do doing the work of Jesus. This week especially, you can think about that a little more because 
Thursday night is Monday Thursday when Jesus showed what real service was about. Does anybody know what Jesus did on Monday Thursday? Washed their feet? He washed their feet. He showed nobody is above doing anything. Even Jesus, God's Son, came out and did that. And Friday, we know what happened on Good Friday. We see the cross right behind us. But then that Easter Sunday morning, the greatest thing that could ever happen for us, he did for us because he loved us. He was resurrected and saved us all. Mm -hmm. So great things you can see Jesus doing, things you can follow up and do also. Be nice. Share with people. Listen and learn. Wait to follow. Do all those things and have a good time doing it. Let's take a moment of prayer and make sure that the folks in the back row, especially the new ground and gravel on the other side there, can hear, because they need to be able to hear us. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you. We thank you. For all the things. For all the things. Jesus did. Jesus did. And we promise. And we promise. To always share. To always share. Our faith. Our faith. In the nice things we do. In the nice things we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming up today. You go head back. Enjoy. Oh, that was fun. <coughs> Psalm 118, beginning with verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows and hands, join in the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And now we'll invite all who are able to please stand for this morning's Palm Sunday Gospel reading. Our Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. We're going to be in the 19th chapter, beginning with 28th verse, where we hear about Jesus coming to Jerusalem as king. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent to his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied up there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying this colt? And they replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. 
I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. There's a little boy who was sick on Palm Sunday and stayed home from church and stayed with his mom. His father returned from church holding a palm branch. The little boy was curious and asked, Why do you have that palm branch, Dad? You see, when Jesus came into town, everyone waved palm branches to honor him. So we got palm branches today. The little boy replied, Oh, shucks. The one Sunday I miss is the Sunday that Jesus shows up. <laughs> We're not quite out of line yet, but we're getting really, really close. This week being Holy Week coming up. Today we've listened to the scripture that describes a triumphal entry. That ride into town on that donkey. Being there with the disciples. If you were one of the followers of Jesus, it looked like the show was getting on the road finally. Triumphant. When he went in, when he entered in. We know there's still danger down in Jerusalem, but it looks like it's going to be okay. This is a great, great day. Everybody's celebrating. The crowds like Jesus and are responding with that support, that wonderful support coming into town. If we do this right, we probably won't get killed. Is what the disciples are thinking. Things are finally turning. Jesus had been on his way to Jerusalem for weeks or maybe months. He was heading along. He's not in a hurry, and he stops and teaches along the way. Teachings we've heard of recently. He zigzags his way there, and he arrives just at the right time. Just at that right time. He arrives on the last possible day to be involved in the full celebration of Passover. Very important in Jewish culture back in the day. And the place is packed when he gets there. The noise of the people and the animals is deafening. You can't really see anything but that sea of humanity. All you see is that big, gigantic group of people all around. He's going to go into Adventureland on a discount ticket day. People everywhere. There's so many people that it's a little uncomfortable, maybe even kind of expensive to be there right at that moment. And it looks like everybody's carrying something. Maybe some food or water, or snacks for the kids, bedding, cooking supplies. They're going to be there for a few days. You name it, and someone's struggling to get through that crowd of what they have with them. As a thought, each Jewish man was expected to make three trips to Jerusalem each year. Part of the faith. Most important part was the Passover. Passover celebration. It was a day that people celebrated salvation from the slave from slavery at the hand of God. It was a day that showed how the blood of the Lamb was used to protect them from God's vengeance. Remember the movie Ten Commandments, putting that blood over the door. You've seen that in that movie. You'll see it again next year. It's probably going to be on again. Many people brought their offerings with them when they went on a celebration. They chose the best lamb and headed off to the festival. Off they went. The lamb was to be treated as a pet as they were on their way there. It was to live with the family, be a part of what was going on. When the family's oldest son was old enough, he was placed in charge of that lamb. So a very, very important thing happening during Passover. So as the crowds got thick, they had to leave the lamb on a leash to be very safe, and probably even carried it across the shoulders, up on the top, being safe. City folks, they brought their land when they went there. And on this day, Jesus would enter the city. It was a deadline, it was the end, the last day to go for this. Choose your land to live with for the week was already happening all around them. General ideas that the land would be taken up and take on your sins, and on Friday would be slaughtered, and the blood offered for the of the family. Tradition back in the day. The keeping of the feast, being faithful to remember God's past salvation is somehow connected to receiving God's mercy. When they're looking at that. So Jesus, here he comes into town to celebrate the Passover, this great feast. He was going to be there also. He books a road outside town by a few miles. He's getting closer to moving in there. As as they approach Jerusalem, he came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you'll find a cold tide there, which no one has ever 
have her written. I'm tying her right here. And if anyone asks you why you're doing this, tell them the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back shortly. She gave him direct instructions. So just a couple miles out, Jesus stops and sends two disciples to go get that colt, go get that donkey. We think about that. He walks everywhere for months, for years. He's walking out there. And now he's within a couple miles of where he's going to be ultimately need to go. He now needs a ride. Very big difference. What's happening? So here he is sending two unnamed followers to get the animal from the edge of the village on a heavy travel day. So very busy. A lot of people all over and borrow a ride. And if you think how he said what he said there, going untie the donkey and tell them this if they ask. He didn't tell them to ask first. Did not give them strength. Well, ask them if you can please use it. The Lord needs it. Can I borrow this for a few minutes? Horse and donkey thing was very big back then. Bad thing. Just like car thieves today and stealing catalytic converters. Bad back then too things were going on. He doesn't send them to get a big stallion, big gigantic horse of any sort, a chariot to ride on. He's just asking his followers to get that little donkey. It's like he's asking these folks today, go to the car dealer and find me a new four-wheel drive Kia convertible that has a sticker on the window. Kia will be in the ignition. Salesman or security guard asks you a question, tell them that the Lord needs it and send it back in just a little while. We know how well that would work. Go over to the woodhouse. Are these disciples that maybe Jesus was not on the top of his list of disciples? Send them out on a task like this? He asked them to do some strange things, but this seems a little dangerous. Let's go and take somebody's donkey and bring it over here. Different, different time. All these things happening all around them, just get us all thinking. Thinking about Jesus and the changes that were coming, things that were going to happen. The thing that really stands out today is that the Lord needed something. <coughs> he asked for something. He needed something. You think back to all our Bible studies, all our times, all the things that have happened. Rarely does Jesus say he needs or wants anything from anybody like this. Maybe he asked for water at the well at one time. Maybe borrow a tune for the weekend coming up. Just a couple little things. Maybe there were others, but... I don't recall him whining about his personal needs ever. I don't know why he was saying, I need something just for me. <clears throat> and you think about Jesus when he's standing there. Couldn't he have just prayed? And God will send him a donkey right there, just appear right out of nowhere? And let him have a new car with the key in it, just show up right here next to me? Flash was over. And away we go. Out of the clouds. That'd have been impressive. Then they would know he really got it created that thing right there in front of him. He could have done that. That's not what happened. I think he could have changed one disciple into a donkey for a few minutes. But maybe no one volunteered to be the one to do it. But don't we already know that he could do what he wants? But he did things that he needed to do. That he was supposed to do. So even with Jesus physically present, the Lord needs something physical today. He needed something right there. He needed something to help him fill the prophecy. The prophecy that was said before. He needed willing people to carry out their tasks. Go get that donkey and bring it here. The disciples must go and do. And the owner, the responsible person, must let that thing be used. Because all humans, all of us, must choose to participate in God's plan. And we've talked about that for a long time. And we think about it, God's own, God owns everything. And he's just gracious enough to let us be stewards for a short while. Good stewards of all that he gives. He gives to us. It's all his. But even God won't take without permission. Won't take without permission. He won't belong to him. Just doesn't go there and grab it and take it away. He do those things. He won't force people to do. He will instruct and ask. But he will never force. We're always asked to do things. Do those fun things like we talked with our ministers today. Be nice. Just have a smile. Be nice. Small things. Jesus today provides a direction of where and what to say, and the disciples 
Scoot up the road and we'll take care of it. They went out and did it. The prophecy is that Jesus, the prophecy that Jesus is fulfilling this morning is from Zechariah. Zechariah 9 chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, daughters of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the pole of a donkey. So if we think about what Zechariah is coming us there, saying, Rejoice, Israel, the king is coming, and he's riding on a donkey. So Jesus did exactly what was needed to be done. They went out and found that colt outside the street, tied in the doorway. When they did untie it, people asked, well, What are you doing? I'm tying that colt, taking my property. This is where it could have gotten really interesting if you think about it. So when you come to your house and just starts taking something, they tell you the Lord needs it, you might be a little questioning on that. Things could have gotten very interesting, very quick for them. They could have just said to the disciples, oh, this is yours. I thought it belonged to my friend. Sorry, must be in the wrong place. Screw down there in a big hurry. They could have just run off without being confronted on the strange mission that Jesus sent them. But they responded just as Jesus told them. A possible problem just vanished. The prophecy was fulfilled. They headed back down the road. Mission accomplished. Coming in with donkey. When they brought the cloak to Jesus, they threw their cloaks on and he sat there. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches. They had cut in the fields. The palm branches <coughs> that we all have today. So here's Jesus sitting on an unbroken donkey. He's not fucked off. Anybody who has a horse knows you just don't jump on one that's never been ridden before and go off. It doesn't stay calm. We usually don't like that. Bit of a miracle itself happening right then and there in front of everybody. And think about that one. Perhaps a special revelation of his divine nature. But the donkey's never quoted on this one. I don't hear much from the donkey, so we can only guess on this whole thing. The people, most likely disciples, were taking off their coats and collecting palm branches. Waving them, throwing them on the road, out in front of this donkey as Jesus is coming in. A sign of respect for him. A sign of celebration as they're coming in. They're making an offering to support and treating his procession like a king returning from a battle trip. Hosanna, here he is. They make it like a parade, like when people came home from wars here in this country over all the years. People waving American flags, tears of joy for the return of family and friends. Perhaps just this kind of patriotism, being there for others. Where we're at today, the Jews were looking for a king. They were looking for a king, and not just any king, but a God-sent king, to be their king. Things were lining up as Jesus was really looking like that person right then and there. Hurrah, our Savior has come. He's here. Celebration is happening. They were looking for that new release from captivity, an absolute Freedom from home. You get away from all those things. They're escorting Jesus into the city. It's a great time. Their actions draw attention. A crowd gathers. People are there watching. A lot of others join in that excitement, just like when the parade comes by. They throw off their coats and snaps up branches and leaves and wave and shout as he's coming past. The excitement from the crowd. Maybe a little bit of peer pressure in there, too. Because everybody wants to get in on the fun. This is a great time. Man, I want to be part of this. The disciples take the position of the king's army, pushing and cheering their way through the crowd as Jesus moves in. Those who went ahead and those who were behind shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! A great, great thing happening. Wonderful, right there. Hosanna in the highest. And Hosanna, translated in Hebrew, means saved God. They're being saved. This was a great moment for them. Everybody's chanting. People are joining in. So remember, back in our days, for some of us, some of you happen to know, peer pressure over in the school. Got to have what they have. Got to be doing what they're doing. There are other kinds of pressures, where to go and things to do. But I can remember people bragging for tennis shoes. Back in my day, and maybe some of your days too, tennis shoes were kind of a new thing. Had to have these great kids tennis shoes to be in the in crowd with those people over there. Most of us didn't have shoes like that. I remember begging for the shoes too. And I ended up with a pair. It was great. Finally got the shoes I wanted. When I found out, I really didn't jump any higher or do anything better than I did before I had. 
except the difference in the weight of my wallet. Let me jump up a little higher. Didn't really work out that well. My dog was short lived on something like that. Was having a problem with blue shoes with the logo on the sides, but they really didn't do too much. Had no lasting value. Never really made me a part of the group either. Just had a dress similarly to them. Guess that happens. By the time I got my pair, they had moved on to something else that made them look cool. I still wasn't a cool man, but that was okay. But the point is, you think some people in the crowd who were there shouting Hosanna, having all this fun, were maybe in the crowd outside of Pilate's house on Friday, same week. Where was their excitement then when they got there? The disciples were no longer leading the parade. And a different group is not influenced in the crowd. Pilate offers to free a prisoner, and they shout. For one to be free, but they want Barabbas, not Jesus. It's changed. They're asked, what should we do with this guy, Jesus? And the shouts of crucify him start ringing out all around. Again, that peer pressure may be stepping in. The peer pressure to choose a lamb of salvation. The peer pressure to be in a popular group. The peer pressure to fit in with the crowd. Who's shouting this and not stand out differently? The peer pressure that keeps people quiet and self controlled. Ah, we don't into that. Peer pressure that keeps people from talking or taking risks and speaking the truth. Right at that time, outside Pilate's house. They were influenced to choose a murderer instead of a lying down. That morning, Friday morning. Now, I know none of us could ever be influenced like that. All of us are way too sophisticated to be taken in by that and mature, to be influenced by peer pressure to turn away from what we know is right. Today, Palm Sunday, it's easy to be caught up in that excitement in the crowd. Hosanna, it's great to be out there by the parade. From here, it's easy to leap next to Sunday to Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be Easter. Great celebration again. We get to do it twice. And we can also kind of forget those negative influences that are happening all around us and happen at this time. It's easy to go with the flow and live a life of Palm Sundays and Good Fridays every week. Never really reach that resurrection day. The most important part of everything, our Lenten journey. Remember all that's happened. It's a time of reflection on how we live and seek the direction of God in our lives. It's a child going to a parent instead of deciding how to live based on what Others are doing, wearing what they want. Peer pressure will always lead us to a life where we'll never be satisfied. Like those crazy shoes. Today's a good day to choose once more to revive our relationships with the Father through the Son, through Jesus Christ. It's a day to leave what the group wants and be a little willing to wake out, break out of those expectations and work toward God's wants of what he wants us to do. Like we spoke this morning. Things we can do. His direction and plan offer you eternal promises. Not just a worn out pair of shoes. We all have it. So let's think ahead a little bit to what happens this upcoming Thursday and Friday. Amazing days in our world. The Last Supper. Washing the feet. The crucifixion. We call them Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. And I hope everybody will be here Monday, Thursday at 7 o'clock in the evening as we celebrate the end of the week. Celebrate the happenings in our faith. And attending on Friday at noon hour the Methodist Church right behind us. Times that direct us to the most indescribable day ever in history. The most amazing thing that happened in this world Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. Celebration for all of us. God does indeed love you. Amen. And this morning, as we do become our church in time of prayer, let's reach out to God who's always listening, to the God who sent His Son and went through all these things for each and every one of us. 
We talk to him with things on our hearts, in our minds. In a time of silent prayer. Father, we look to you this morning through the veil of Holy Week. Events have happened here in our world to your Son, who did what it took for each and every one of us. We thank you and honor you for all that has happened, for all that you give us in our lives. We thank you for this amazing time together, time of learning, time of song, time of prayer, a time of sharing. We thank you for all these things. We thank you for the ability to come to you whenever we need to. In that quick moment of prayer, I say thank you. That little moment from our hearts when we look to you and feel comfort from you. We thank you especially in this week, the celebration of your son coming into Jerusalem. We celebrate also that Jesus was here. We celebrate in our hearts, in our actions, and in our words. We thank you for his teaching us all the way through the very, very end. We thank you for the incredible things that we learned, how to be a servant for washing the feet, and how to share at the table that you set, how to act when we really need to step up. We thank you for that strength. We thank you for the faith. We thank you for the ability to get through everything that's thrown at us in life and know that it will be okay because of all that your son did. And Lord, we know we can come to you with our joys, our concerns, things happening. We pray for those people in Ukraine, Lord, for this extraordinary time losing their homes, their places, and their country. We pray for those right here in our area, for those who have passed, family members, friends. We ask you to be with the families, friends, acquaintances, as they go through that tough time. We pray for Delaware and Jeff, who will be going to all your upcoming treatments. Be with them, their families, the caretakers, the doctors and nurses, we thank you for them. We praise you for them and their willingness to be there for each and every one of us as we need. We pray for those who are going through continuing illnesses, those who are not feeling the best, those who are struggling right at this time. We pray for those undergoing continuing treatments that you'll be with them. Give them comfort. Give us the ability to be their comfort, to be there for them. Father, we know we come to you with all those incredible things that are happening in our lives and in our world. For new babies being born in our families, we thank you for that joyous event. For moving to new homes and new places and finding fun ways of life there too. We thank you. We thank you for the beauty of this day, the beauty of the spring and the flowers and the daffodils that are coming up now. For the beauty of the flowers on our altar and the meanings behind each and every one of them. We thank you for all these things, Lord. As we also lift up to you our prayers for those whose prayers are known only to you. For those who suffer in silence. For those who have no voice that will be their voice and always be there for them. We pray for the Lord whose name will never know whose faces will not receive, we lift them up to you. Because we do have love in our hearts, the love that Jesus showed to us, the love that you showed to us 
through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we also lift up those words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This reading is from Luke chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him and said, It is as you do say. So Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no fault in this man. But they were the more fierce, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. 
if the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for long to see him, because he had heard so many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered with nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other, for previously they had been at enmity with each other. And continuing from verse 13. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, and one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release unto them at one, one person unto the, at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for certain sedition made in the city, and for murder, was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. As they led Jesus away, he seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and, and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was a written notice above him which said, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise.
it was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Now I invite every, all who are able to please rise for our summer response before you go. <laughs>
Thank you.